The opinions expressed on the Simone Edwards Show by our guest are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of KEPXRadio.com, its owner, and or the Simone Edwards Show and those affiliated with it. In no event will the Simone Edwards Show, KEPXRadio.com, its owners, guests, hosts, or affiliates be liable for the information disseminated on the program, including, without limitation, any loss or damage, indirect or otherwise, arising from information presented on the show. We trust you are of legal age and will consult appropriate professionals prior to employing any opinions expressed on the show. Many of the topics discussed are personal in nature, and some people may disagree with the opinions expressed on the show. We are open to your constructive criticism and or ideas for future radio programs. Please feel free to email us at the Simone Edwards Show at gmail.com. All right, we are back here in studio with Mary Chia, psalmist and creator of Kingdom Groove. We want to welcome you all to another installment of the Simone Edwards Show. How is everyone doing out there in Radio Land? We hope you are having a wonderful Saturday afternoon. It is gorgeous here in the city of San Diego. I'm not going to lie. It is awesome. So wherever you are, we're asking you to just kind of take this moment to chill back, just chill, relax, sit back, get a cup of coffee, get some tea maybe iced tea because it's hot in san diego yes, today it is it's too hot <laughs> for coffee it's yeah. too unless it's iced <laughs> right. so um we have in the studio with us today mary chia um who is a psalmist a personal friend of mine awesome sister in the lord and she just recently started a new project that we're going to hear about a little bit further um in the broadcast called kingdom groove but yes. before we jump all the way off into the deep end mary we just want to find out a little bit more about you so first and foremost where are you from i am from a little place called middletown ohio it sits between dayton and cincinnati oh shut up you're not a native no i'm not Oh my gosh, I did not, I just learned something new, y'all. <laughs> um, so, you're Midwest? Yes, born and raised. How long did you live in the Midwest? Uh, until high school. Really? Yeah, so after high school, I uh, moved to Dayton, Ohio to be with my grandmother. Okay. And then I told my grandmother I was going to move in with some guy, and she said, no, you're not, I'm going to send you to San Diego. So she put me on a bus for $99, and... That was back in the 80s. So, you know, this is like my second go around out here in San Diego. Oh, wow. Yes. So what was it like growing up in the Midwest? Um, it, it had its perks. It was cold. <laughs> uh, there were days where, you know, uh, we were in the house for three days during those winter times because they would shut the city down and nobody could be outside so you know after your second day you've got cabin fever right especially being a child you right know, and you're getting up and going to school this is a regular routine right so you know it it had its perks and some days where it's like okay i can't wait till i leave up out of this place because there's nothing happening okay so one of the things that we hear a lot about the midwest is family values Yes. So as far as growing up and getting, you know, kind of your foundation laid right and living here in San Diego now, how long have you been in San Diego? Uh, my second go around, I've been here since 2005. Okay. So, so. You, you kind of have some experience with yes. San Diego. Yes. What would you say um, is the difference between growing up in the Midwest and maybe growing up in San Diego? Well, other than the weather. Other okay. than the most Other obvious. than the weather. Yeah. In the Midwest, you're correct. It is about family. Um, it's about those ties, uh, not only in your family, but the communities were, are smaller. So you kind of know everybody and everybody knows you. Everybody knows your mom or your dad. Right. They know your grandma. So, you know, if you out somewhere in the community doing something that right. you were supposed to be doing, trust right. me, either your mom was going to know. Or your grandmother was going to know. So, you know, you had to keep that, uh, you know, that you better be good or somebody going to get you. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's, it's funny because I think we've kind of lost that sense of community just 
globally. Yes. You know, we've, well, I shouldn't say globally, nationally at least, we have lost the sense of community where, you know, the whole idea of it takes a village to raise a child and that somebody would be yes. watching out for your child. Yes. And so I, I think that's incredible that you grew up with that. Yes. Um, so let me ask you a question. How large, are you from a small, medium, or large size family? Uh, there's five of us. So I'm the second oldest child. So okay. that's probably medium. I medium. think if you go okay. to six, that's yeah. large. <laughs> <laughs> and all the people who are six are probably like, wait a minute. There's only one. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So what was it like growing up? How many, before we even go to how was it like growing up in a family of five, how many sisters are there? There are three sisters. I'm the oldest. Okay. So, and there's one brother, uh, firstborn. Okay. Yes. So wait a second. Three sisters and one brother. That's four. No, I'm the fifth one, though. Oh, you're the fifth. So I got gotcha. you. a total of five. Gotcha, gotcha, I'm gotcha. I'm the second oldest. Okay, so there's like four girls. Yes. Good Lord. Yeah. So what was it like growing up in a house of four girls? Well, you know what? I was the kind of child that I stayed in my room. Uh-huh. Very secluded. Okay. I loved music and I loved books. Okay. So if you wanted to know where I was, all you had to do was come upstairs. Okay. Um, I was never one of those uh, individuals that I wanted to be outside right. with other people. Not that I didn't like other people. <laughs> I was just comfortable with my own company. Gotcha. And I'm still kind of like that now. Right. Uh, I do try to push myself to get out. Not saying that I'm a non-sociable person, but I'm comfortable with being in my own company. So technically, you would be considered an introvert. Yes. Not necessarily that you're shy. Right. You just don't get your energy from people. Right. Correct. Gotcha. And you recharge when you're away from people. Yes. Exactly. High five to the introverts. That's all I have to say. <laughs> High five. Yes. Nothing wrong with me. And, and here's the thing. You can actually be a social introvert. Yes. People are not aware of that. Right. It's just when it comes time to recharge, mm -hmm. I don't recharge by being around a bunch of people like i just i need to go i need to go i love you i, I do but go away <laughs> you you ex you know exactly who i am <laughs> that is me all the way and see i think if you kind of start out maybe just you know some business cards walking around expressing that to yes. people yes hi it's not that i don't like right. you it's just I'm going to probably need to be away from you <laughs> for about a week. Right. But right. I still love you. Right. And then turn it over on the back and say, please don't take this person away. <laughs> I still love you. <laughs> I still love you. Right. Right. Yes. So social introverts, we get each other. Yes. Um, so thinking about your family, what would you say is like your favorite childhood memory? Um, my mom, you know, she mm -hmm. was single parent. My parents divorced when we were young. Okay. So of course she was working all the time and mm -hmm. we were old enough to where we could take care of ourselves. Right. Well, of course, being church kids. Right. We played a lot of church in the house. Okay. Uh, we had the congregation, which was my <laughs> siblings. Nice. Um, you know, we had a preacher, which was probably my brother. Okay. Uh, we made up an offering song. <laughs> so, you know, we tear up paper and act like that was our offering and stuff. So we, we had a good time with ourselves because a lot of times we couldn't go outside while mom was gone. Right. We couldn't have any company. Rightfully so, you know, because she's away. You right. don't never know what's going to happen in your home. So we had a good time together. Oh, that's really wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So would you want to share with us if the offering song, if you the remember? Song? Uh -huh. I remember some of the words, okay. not all. Okay. And it goes, offering, 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 $25 a piece. Offering, 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 it will make your life complete. I think that's as far as I go. I don't remember the rest of it. Wait a minute. Y'all were asking for $25 we, in the family living room? Yeah, we were asking for $25. Oh, y'all were serious about church. We were serious about church. <laughs> Not whatever God places on your heart to give. <laughs> we want you to get at $25. <laughs> now, if you want to do something extra, please do that. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. But we ask him for $25. What's your baseline? We out of $20 lines. We didn't do $20 <laughs> lines in my house. $25. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> yes. That sounds like an awesome childhood memory. We had a great time. Was there an evangelist? I'm just, I just want to know. Uh, no, uh, not really. Was there a mother? 
if there was a mother, it was probably me. <laughs> you know, being the oldest, right. having, you know, right. more experience than of course. the three behind me. Of so, course. yeah, if there was a mother, it would be me. But other than that, that's where it stayed. It was just, you know, like a starter church. Right. You got your family. That's it. Okay. You got your brothers and your sisters. And if you're married, you had your husband and wife. Okay. So everybody did everybody's job in a starter church. That's right. That's all it was. What was the name of this church Uh, where you had to pay $25 in the offering? Now that, (laughs) I don't believe we had a name. We just church. That was it. It it was a church? It was just church. It was just church. The church. (laughs) Let's just go with that. The church. <laughs> right? That sounds now like... Now, don't y'all take that name. It's already taken. Don't, and don't take the offering song either. Right. I'm just... I'm trying to put that out there. <laughs> we gonna we go handle this right. Right. Offering, offering, offering. $25 a piece. $25 a right. piece. <laughs> and, and what was the second part? It will make your life complete. It will... <laughs> it will make your life complete. It will make your life complete. Yes. So... Out of all of this and playing church and all that other stuff, and you think about your siblings and you think about your family and the, the experiences that you've had mm-hmm. um, from age of recollection until now. Okay. Looking across, you know, the horizon, is there anybody that stands out as a hero for you? And if so, who and why? Well, I would have to say my mom. Okay. Um, you know, like I said earlier, she's. Uh, divorced right single mom um, single mom worked made right. sure that we had what we need even mm-hmm. though it wasn't a lot right you know and I'm not ashamed to say it she did the public assistance and all that we did the government cheese and the big can of peanut butter right and all of that why she would be such a hero to me it it was her strength right that carried her with five children right and really, basically, nobody to help her except maybe my grandmother. Right. Um, she wasn't a woman who had a whole lot of company, mm-hmm. especially men friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back then, you know, child molestation really wasn't, you really didn't hear a lot about it. Right, right, right. Then. Right. But it was still there. Gotcha. So she wasn't the type of woman who had, you know, men mm-hmm. in her house. She didn't have boyfriends or none of that. So we really didn't see a lot of people coming in and out of our house. Right. You know, um, we were in Sunday school. She was cooking. And although she was working at a daycare center Mm -hmm. cooking, Mm -hmm. she was coming home to cook as well until we learned how to cook and take care of the house. Wow. So my mom, Teresa Chia. Yeah, oh my gosh. In honor of Teresa Chia, yes. shout out to all the single moms yes. who make sacrifices yes. and do what they have to do to yes. make sure that their children eat and that they're fed, yes. and th- that they're not just fed physically, but spiritually yes. and emotionally mm-hmm. and mentally. Shout out to the single moms yes. and, and single dads. We don't want to leave you out. Right. Because, right. I mean, that's the job. Yeah. You know, and so, like you said, there is no shame. If whatever you need to do to make sure, you know, whatever within the realm of reason mm-hmm. and logic yes. and the law yes. that you need to do to keep your children safe yes. and protected. So if it's government cheese, thank you, Jesus, for the government cheese, right? Because they made the best <laughs> cheese sandwiches. Now, see, I... Real I, cheese. Yeah. Lord see, I didn't mercy. know anything about Don't, that. Not too many people do. Really? Yes. The I heard it was good. Grilled cheese. Slice it up, butter on both sides. My God, it was wonderful. So the church had like a church fellowship afterwards? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. Is Sometimes. That what, we is, would go in, in the refrigerator and get the, <laughs> you know, the leftovers, heat them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that church. I, I just, I love yes, that church. The so, church. Yeah, shout out to your mom. Seriously, you. my hat goes off to her. Thank you. Um, so last question from our icebreaker section of getting to know Mary Chia. Lord willing, what do you want your life to look like? Or what do you, what do you hope your life will look like five years from today? Five years from today, I would pray that um, my life would be, hopefully it's in- inspiration to somebody now. But I see myself uh, teaching. Yeah. Um, girls from anywhere from 30 to 45 anybody that's struggling with certain issues in their life you know yeah i'm the kind of person even though i'm comfortable with me if you have a problem and you're not sure 
who to talk to and God puts me on your mind, uh-huh. I don't mind opening up myself like that to help somebody else get over uh, whatever they're in at the moment. That's wonderful. Because we all need to help each other out. So, right. within, you know, within five years, just there. I'm there to help you, whatever you need, teacher, counselor. Um, if you say, I want Mary Chia to baptize me, amen. I have to talk to my pastor about that one, though. <laughs> <laughs> but you have so much skill from the church. Yes, from the church. I'm experienced. You That's know? right. You had that in, I mean, like in the living room. Yes, in the living room. <laughs> that is absolutely, and I love that. I absolutely love that. You're just your willingness to God, wherever you want to put me, mm-hmm. as long as I'm helping other people. Yes. And especially um, young women, which is so needed yes. in this day and age. Like, they, I, I really believe that younger women need to see us. Yes. You know, we are the generation that we used to look up to. Right. If I can say that. Right. We are. And so to see us standing strong and to see us serving God and to see us being our own unique, vibrant selves, but remaining faithful and committed to God and being able to hold confidence and to be discreet yes. and to, you know, yes. really protect the hearts of the people that God put around us. Yes. Mary, I think that that's absolutely wonderful. All right, KEPX, we will be back. We have to pause for station identification. We are going to be back in studio with Mary Chia in just a moment. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's show? Would you like to share your testimony or any constructive critiques? Would you like to know how to become a guest on The Simone Edwards Show? Well, please feel free to email us at Show at gmail.com. We are also available on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Be sure to follow us to receive updates regarding the show and our other ministries. All right, we are back here in studio with Mary Chia uh, of Kingdom Groove, psalmist and creator of Kingdom Groove. And we just got done learning so much about her childhood. I'm still tickled about the church (laughs) that she had with her siblings (laughs) and the offering song. I don't think I will ever forget that offering song. Um, So, Mary, one of the things you said was, you know, if we wanted to find you when you were young, you were the kid that were in you were in your room with music and books. Yes. At what point did you discover your talent for singing probably when they asked me to do one of the Tremaine uh, Tremaine Hawkins songs in the choir really yes how old were you when that happened that was probably when I was between maybe 14 and 15 years old oh wow so just to come into the knowledge of just okay I'm a singer right now right uh, it was scary and it was overwhelming so uh, I had asked the choir director I said well can I just stay with the choir? Do I really have to be out? You know how your lead person goes out in the front and everybody stays in the back. Right. I said, well, can I please just stay with the choir? Because I feel more comfortable with them. Right. And he didn't have any problem with it. So I sang one of those Tremaine Hawkins songs. And that was it. it. That started the whole thing right there. Oh, wow. So how did you go about, did you develop it? Or was it just, it was a gift and it was there and you just kept singing? Or did you go through a process of developing your gift? There was some development. I had uh, another choir director. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so when I started singing, I I would sing in this like falsetto type. So if you understand singing, there would be like this falsetto type singing that I would do. And so the one choir director, she was like, now, no, you can't do that. And I'm trying to understand what she's talking about. And she's saying, I know there is more in you than what you're giving us and you can push that out so you know i just started singing so if you've ever heard me sing in this present time Uh that was the push that i needed to come out of that soft sweet kind of singing into the more aggressive uh we gonna tear the devil's kingdom down right here and now with this song wow yeah okay so in in as you were developing all of that and, and moving into like what we would call the levels of anointing. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, what, what genres of music did you find yourself gravitating towards? Well, for me, mm-hmm. it is the congregational. Okay. It is the blood, So the call and response? The call and response. Okay. It is the blood medleys. It's just all of those foundational songs that I know that I grew up with. 
and I love the other music, mm. but if I'm feeling some type of way, one of those songs will just pop into my head because it's in my heart. Right. Um, and I'm lifted. I saw a Caucasian lady walking yesterday and she had a cross on her, uh, around her neck. And the song popped in, there is room at the cross for you. Oh, that's beautiful. There is room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There is room at the cross for you. I don't even know how many people actually know that song now. Yeah. You've never heard that song? No, I have. But you brought up a really good point, though. And and as especially because you like the congregational songs yes. and the call and response yes. songs. How far away have we drifted from the foundational songs of the church? We've drifted far away. That's just my opinion. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, because I, I know for me, I've tried to... Um, say, well, hey, can we try this song? Or do you guys know this song? Or, you know, a lot of times it's, no, we've never heard that song before. So really? now we're into, you know, trying to teach these songs right. to a younger group of people that, you know, and, and let me back up. Okay. There are some that I know of who are in their 30s. Mm -hmm. They do know those types of songs, but a lot of them. Right have no idea what we're singing about really I, I, don't, I don't know that or we don't know that song so we're not going to do that let's do you know something that we do all the time and let's stay right here and and that's that's okay if you know those songs mm -hmm. you know those types of songs there's nothing wrong with them but if i'm in trouble i need something that's gonna bring god into my atmosphere and if that song Jesus keep near the cross. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Right. Puts him. Now he's everywhere. But if that puts him in my atmosphere to where he can help me, mm -hmm. that's what I want to know. Those are the songs that I want to sing. Okay. So um, define for me using that as your base. How do you as a worship leader define worship? My whole being. Okay. Everything is supposed to be worship. And granted, there are days where, uh, you know, being in the flesh, I don't want to worship. Right. But I feel, you know, the Holy Spirit pushes me and says, but you need to worship. I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's getting ready to happen. But if I'm obedient and just go ahead and worship before right. whatever is coming. Right. Hey, I'm already there. Whatever is coming is not going to bother me. Oh, I love that. So segue that into... What does, on a practical level, mm -hmm. the lifestyle of worship look like? If worship is my entire being, mm -hmm. like you just said, mm -hmm. then what does the lifestyle of worship, what does that look like? The lifestyle of worship is, as Jesus says, it's holiness. Okay. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. In other words, if I'm not in my word, That's if good. I'm not praying, if I'm not meditating... Um, if I haven't sacrificed uh, one of my TV shows that I like that I pre-record and <laughs> I got to watch that right now. Right. God says, no, I don't want you to watch that right now. I want you to worship. You know, he still gives me a choice. Either I can watch the show that I like right. or I can worship. So it's about commitment, the love that I have for what I do. Right. And faithfulness. Oh, that's it. I love that word that's faithfulness. It. I really do. And I think all of that commitment and faithfulness and loving what you do, because oftentimes we miss the scripture where God talks about being willing and obedient yes. and serving him with gladness. Yes. You know what I mean? You're not serving him with your feet dragging behind you. Right. You're not serving him murmuring and complaining. I don't know why I got to lead praise and worship. Right. I don't know why I got to collect the offering. I don't know why I got to clean the church. Exactly. You know? <laughs> but, you know, it's having that joy and that mm -hmm. sincere I, I absolutely love that I absolutely love that so we mentioned the fact that you are a worship leader yes. tell us uh, for those of us who do not know and for those of us who think we know mm -hmm. what is a worship leader and what is the responsibility of a worship leader Ooh. Ooh. 
I'm, did I get you in trouble? I am, no, I'm <laughs> that responsibility. A worship leader is for myself on the days that I don't feel like it. I still have to do it. Because I like that. Because there are Sundays and there are, you know, if you call me. Right. I have such a struggle within myself to be a worship leader um, as far as I know that within me I don't have the capability of, of you know making it successful without having God there first right so that struggle that's in me as a worship leader mm-hmm. and, and I just I mean, people just, they don't believe it. I really struggle with, oh, God, I have to do worship this week. And that's not to say that I didn't do my part of it during the week. Right. But it's that moment where it's like, okay, it's it's me. But people see me, but Uh it's really you got to see God. But I know that you're looking at me. (coughs) Right. And for an introvert. (laughs) Right, right. That's not really a comfortable position right so it is a struggle for me and people really can't seem to believe that like why do you have such a hard time you know doing a song or ministering because I know that I'm not capable of doing it unless God allows me to do it and I think that's such a wonderful position to be in because the danger becomes when you start to think you can do it yeah because eventually you'll convince yourself that you can do it without God right you know, and then when you start doing anything for God without him, you're just kind of starting to spell catastrophe yeah, yeah. in the slowest, the most painful way possible. Right. Um, all right. So now here's my next question for you. As a worship leader, how do you protect the gift that God has given you? What do you do to protect it naturally and spiritually? Naturally, um, I try to stay away from those things that I know will take my mind okay off of god okay be it tv okay spending too much time on my computer because you know i love video games oh okay i I love to play them little arcade video games on the computer okay but i have to be careful with that because um once i start okay oh god it's two hours have gone by already and i've been playing this game for two hours right you know and so my spirit says okay you know it's time to get off this computer right you've been on it for two hours right um you know so it's that it's protecting that naturally with staying away from too much television i can't put too many shows in my spirit gotcha Um, you know it's about protecting your mind right you know we talk about gates and stuff eye gates ear gates right heart gates it's all this stuff that we let okay y'all can come in here right. you go. You can come in. Yeah. Uh, this TV show can come in. So then when it's time to minister spiritually, what have you put into it to that soul that just came over to your house or called you on the phone? You're so far away from worship and praise and being in the presence of God that, okay, wait, let me get my mind back into where I'm supposed to be. Do you understand what I mean? I really do. I really do. And it, it's, it's from what you're describing it, it sounds like this get in one position and stay there yeah so that you're not constantly like okay let me run out of the presence of god or um, not that we can leave his presence but you understand what i'm saying we don't move out of a place of holiness or a place where we're ready to be used at any moment yes it's the idea of god if you send somebody to me right now Mm -hmm. i'm ready ready. i don't have to pray through right i'm ready yeah but if i've spent two hours on a pre-recorded houses of wives or right preachers of somebody right and i done got all that met you know if that's what you do that's what you do that's your thing i'm not trying to condemn nobody right that's what right, you right, do. right right for me that's not for me i need to stay as much as i possibly can in the presence of the lord because i'm a person of the intercessor right um i pray is what i do no, no i feel you and it makes me think of i remember um when i was in school one of my classmates making the comment it needs to be edutainment 
mm-hmm. instead of entertainment. Right. Because, and again, no one's trying to pass judgment, but, you know, a lot of reality shows, first of all, are really not reality. They're exactly. scripted. Exactly. And so a lot of the drama and the negativity, right. it's kind of like if I get that into me right. and into my mindset, then I, it's in a way you kind of become polluted whether you realize you it or not because you're ingesting that as a steady diet right. versus... You know, maybe I'm going to watch something that's going to trigger my thinking, make a connection between what happened in scripture or, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Something that will help me to be a better steward over God's money, a better steward over the life that he's given me. Whatever the case, something that is actually working towards building me up in Christ. And sometimes we think that the things that build me up in Christ always have to be spiritual right laying in his presence for four hours I'm not knocking dude hey if right. I can find four hours to hey <laughs> bring it right at the same time we are also we also have to take care of the natural part of our lives mm-hmm. so if I'm gonna watch something why not watch something that's gonna help me to be a better me right than I am right now right. Because that's going to build me up. I mean, no offense to the housewives, but I don't think they're offering a whole lot of stuff that's going to build me up as a person. Right. Um, So I like that. I I really like that. Um, What are some other ways that you protect the gift that God has given you? I protect it by um, not doing a whole lot of unnecessary talking to unnecessary folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, sometimes we, you know, I don't know. Sometimes things can get a little messy. Okay. You know, I'm not a messy person. At least I don't consider myself to be a messy person. Right. Uh, I, I I read somewhere in Proverbs where it talks about your name is worth more your word is worth more than gold and silver right so if you got a good name for yourself Mm -hmm. people are gonna know that right you know mary chia oh yeah you know we don't hardly ever see her out anywhere that and trust please simone i'm not an angel okay? okay i need people to understand that right right i'm not an angel i still have my attitudes i still have my personality i still get angry i still say things you know, I don't cuss. I still say things right. that, you know, might offend you. Right. I don't know. Right. But I'm just saying for me and my house. Right. We're going to serve the Lord. I love it. I absolutely love it. Do you have a personal mission statement now that you've said that? Uh, do I? Yeah. As a worship leader, do you find that you have, is there a mission statement a saying that kind of is the driving force behind what you do my mission statement would have to be really simple lord i'm going to do my best but then after that you have to do the rest got it so when i stand up before a mic i'm going to give it the best that i can give it right and then while i'm there i'm praying okay lord now i need you to take over Gotcha. You know, not that I didn't want you to take over before, but always take over. Uh But now it's about ministry. It's always about ministry. Gotcha. You know, so when I'm at that point, Mm -hmm. I try to keep my focus. I I don't do a lot of talking when I minister, when I'm getting ready to minister. So if I seem a little non-sociable, it's because I'm already zoned. I'm already where I need to be mentally Mm -hmm. and who needs to be ministered to because I just don't know. Gotcha. Okay. I love it. Yeah. So with that said, what advice would you give to worship leaders? What would you give advice do you give to the worship leader who is just starting out? That's kind of like, how do I do this? What do I do when I get up to sing and people are staring back at me and it just seems like stone faces? Or what do I do when it seems like it's a cold oven? Right. You know what I mean? And I I have to pull. What advice do you have for worship leaders? For a worship leader, Mm -hmm. you have to look beyond the people. And actually, you have to have an audience of just you and God. I love that. That's it. Because people are people. Right. And they're going to be people. Right. They're either going to get with you or they're going to sit on you. Right. There's nothing you can do about that. So either you've made the connection during the week. Right. With God before the worship leader gets up to worship. Uh-huh. Or you didn't. Right. And so now it's harder for me to draw you in or pull you in or right. lead you in to the presence of the Lord because of whatever reason. Right. You know, so for a worship leader, it's about commitment. 
it's about faithfulness. It's about dedication. If nobody else is going to do it and God has called you to do it, you have to do it. Oh, I love it. You, I mean, you have to be there. Um, I, you know, I go to North Park Church. Right. So, you know, and a lot of people, I've heard people say, well, you know, you're always there. That's where my position is. That's where my post is. So if right. I'm not on my post, gotcha. who's going to be in my post? Gotcha. You know? Right. Yeah, there's somebody that could do it, but that's my post. That's where God put me. I think that that's an incredible attitude to have because I think so often, you know, there can be, or the, the new prevailing attitude, I should say, that is is trying to creep into churches Mm -hmm. is, oh, somebody else will take care of it. Yes. Or, yeah, I know God called me to it, but I got this going on over here. And so God will raise somebody up. And I think it's so refreshing and so incredibly um, inspiring and challenging all at the same time to be like, no, I need to have a mentality that God, you gave this to me. Exactly. And because you gave this to me, I'm going to do the best that I can possibly do with what you have given me. Yes. For your kingdom, for your house, to build it up. Yes. Knowing that if I remain faithful when I cross over, yes, there will be a reward for my faithfulness. Hallelujah. I think that's yes. beautiful, that man. Is, I love that. It. Absolutely love that. Okay, we have to take a pause for station identification. We will be back in studio with Mary Chia in just a moment. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's show? Would you like to share your testimony or any constructive critiques? Would you like to know how to become a guest on The Simone Edwards Show? Well, please feel free to email us at Show at gmail.com. We are also available on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Be sure to follow us to receive updates regarding the show and our other ministries. All right, we are back here in studio with Mary Chia, psalmist and founder of Kingdom Groove. So when we last left, we were talking about the responsibility of the worship leader and your personal mission statement and advice for leaders. And I thought you gave out some amazing information. So we're going to segue just a little bit. Um, how do you how do you apply the principle of be ready in season and out of season to worship? Because so often we hear that and we think, oh, that's for preaching. Right. How do you apply it right. to worship? Because that's, that's my thought. Oh, that's for preaching. Yeah. Um, in season, because there are times when you can be the flavor of the month, so right. to speak. Right, right. Everybody's calling your name. Everybody wants you to come minister. You know, you're here, you're there, you're up here, you're down there. Um, but then there comes a time when God takes you somewhere and don't nobody know you. Wow. Even though you lit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even though yeah. you're in a church. Right. God can put you in a place where nobody's calling your name. Right. Nobody's calling you to minister. Right. Nobody's calling you to do anything. And you feel like, okay, did I do something wrong? Right. But in that instant, you should never stop doing your regular schedule program that you have with God. I love it. Fasting, praying, reading your word singing songs and hymns on your, let's call it uh, your day off or a break. Right, right, right. right. Those things should never stop. Even though you're not the flavor of the month. Right. Those things should never stop just because people are not calling your name. Here's what I'm hearing. It goes back to what you were saying earlier. This has to be a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And when it's a lifestyle, whether it's you're a preacher, a worship leader, a saint. Yeah. If it's your lifestyle, then you will always be instant in season and out of of season. Because regardless of whether or not you call me, I'm still going to fast, pray, read my word. Yes. Yes. I'm not going to wait. When you schedule me for something. Okay, well, I'm scheduled to go sing next week. So let me pray and fast this week so I can minister to the people. No, it is a consistent, continual thing. Now, let me correct myself. Okay. I'm not always in that. Gotcha. No. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Right. So I don't want to get it twisted that I'm always fasting. I'm always praying. I'm always in the presence of God. No, I have my days. I fall off too. Right. You know, that's just me. But if you're going to do this, that's what it has to be. There are sacrifices made. You won't be able to go everywhere with everybody else because sometimes people just don't want you there because you're so whatever. Right. You know. 
well, you know, she already thinks that, you know, it's God and, you know, people really don't want to hear about holiness. Right. And when you tell them about holiness, they think it's a judgment. No, right. it's not. <laughs> I love that. I absolutely love that. And that is a very true statement. And it's, it's almost like becoming okay with that. Yeah. Becoming okay. Because really, if we, if we're going to follow the, if we're going to follow the true leader, which is the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, he wasn't always accepted. Right. And he wasn't always wanted. Right. And he didn't, right? Right. So if he was rejected. Right. I mean, that's what the word says. That's what the word says. Then we're going to be rejected. Yes. But it's about that readiness. Yes. Always. God, I'm going to stay ready. And so instead of it being my 2080, mm -hmm. fasting, prayer, and reading my Bible is going to be my 8020. Yes. So I'm going to have my days where I'm off yes. and I'm in the flesh and I'm just kind of like, mm. right. I want to watch my TV show. Yeah. Okay. I want you. Right. But my 80. Yes. I should always strive for. And then even when it becomes comfortable for it to be my 80, 20, I should bump it up yes. and make it my 90, 10. Yes. Cause really it's not realistically, we may not ever get to a hundred cause we still have us to deal with. Yes. But, On a daily basis. Yeah. But I'm striving for it. Yes. I love it, Mary. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Um, so, what projects do you have in the queue? What's going on in the works? Tell us about Kingdom Groove. I know that's one of your projects. That's one of my projects. Okay. Uh, so what is Kingdom Groove? Kingdom Groove, uh, I came up with this idea a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. um, and the concept yeah. that came to my mind is like sort of like an entertainment tonight, but without all of the drama. Drama. Right. So it's on the spiritual side, mm -hmm. bringing you information through uh, social media. Okay. Um, about your favorite artists mm -hmm. here in San Diego, maybe some bands and some artists that you don't know about, wow. you know, because music is universal. We can all, you know, gravitate to music in gotcha. some kind of way. Yeah. I'm the kind of person I like all kind of music. Okay. So I do country. I love Jimmy Swagger. Sometimes I pull him up on my uh, computer. <laughs> I just let him sing. That's right. just me. I know sing it's Jimmy. Sing Jimmy. <laughs> you know, because, you know, to me, I feel the sincerity right. of his singing. Right. You know, um, I, I like country music. I love opera. I wish I had somebody that could teach me how to do a song in opera at least one time. Wow. Vocal training. Um, some rock and roll. I mean, I, that's just who I am. Right. I love music. So with Kingdom Groove, I try to uh, get a connection between uh, our type of music and others, like I said, for people that you may not know about, bands that you might be interested in and you don't right, know, right? Or concerts that you want to go to, and oh, I love that. You know, that's yeah. the concept for that. And of course, I wanted to get into other things like a Kingdom Groove book club or a Kingdom Groove health, well, and fitness. Yeah, um, you know, because naturally, you know, anything that you do naturally. It's going to affect you spiritually and anything that you do spiritually is going to affect you naturally. Right. So if I'm sitting up all day long and I haven't got up to walk, exercise, I'm going to get lazy. So, of course, the spiritual, I'm going to be lazy spiritual because why should I do that? I love it. Yeah, I love that. So I really like the concept of Kingdom Groove. So where can we check out Kingdom Groove? Kingdom Groove. I do have a Facebook page. Okay. So all you have to do is go on Facebook. Um, type in Kingdom Groove, uh -huh. and you'll see some of the video, the interviews that I've done with previous artists. Okay. Um, also, I have a YouTube channel where okay. you can subscribe to that. Please subscribe. Please like. Okay. You know, uh, and it's just pure fun for me. Right. You know, so I have this little gimmick that I do with it. If you've seen any of the interviews, I have a little British accent. Really? That I usually throw in there. Oh, oh yes. All the time. Oh, yeah, my goodness. So it's like I can go in and out of it anytime I want to. I think that's absolutely remarkable. Oh, my God. You can do it, too. I can do it, too. All right. I love it. I so love that's it. my gimmick right there for uh, Kingdom Groove. Um, and it helps me to be a little bit more comfortable with people. You know what I mean? I think that's absolutely fascinating. Because yes. I still have to push myself to do that. I, I think still you struggle... It. Yeah. To do that. Oh, God, I got to go interview somebody. I do. Oh, are you sure? Like now, can I cancel? No, just go. Right. What's the problem? Yeah. 
I love that. <laughs> so now I know that you are, you were in the process of getting a CD recorded. Where are you with that? Well, the CD, mm-hmm. um, I don't want to say it's a bust. Okay. Uh, things really didn't work out okay. uh, financial wise uh-huh. uh, like I had hoped. Okay. So, you know, with everything, you need money. Um, love the encouragement that people gave me, but you need to understand the money helps more than the encouragement to get a project out. Right. So in that wise, it kind of fell on the financial side. But the music is still there. It's still loaded in the studio. Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of work to do on it. But again, I need the money. Gotcha. uh, To finish that project. Okay. So it's just a not yet. It's not. It's just a not yet. It's a not yet. That's all it is. It's not a failure. Right. It's just a, it's It's not not yet. yet. Right. Yeah. The baby is still developing. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and sometimes they come premature. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's but the, baby, ba- the baby is developing. The baby's developing. Yes. The baby's not dead. No. It's a not yet. Right. Okay. So at some point, we will be able to hear. Some point. The music of Mary Chia. Yes. Psalmist. Yes. Worship leader. Yes. I love it. I yeah. think that's awesome. Um, we have actually, we have about two minutes left or less than two minutes left for the show. We've had such a blast here in studio with you today, Mary. I'm so excited about your future and what God has in store for you. Continue to support and push other artists out there because, you know, everybody wants to support who's known. Yes. And it takes a special person to say, no, 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 I want to take this person who is not known and God, you use me to propel them where you need to go so that your purposes can be accomplished. So I think that that's incredible. So do not give up on kingdom groove at all. Can continue to do that and to get the information out. Um, And it's kind of good to have that so that, you know, you never know someone can go to a concert Mm -hmm. and get and meet the Lord through a concert. So continue to, um, let God use you to do the things that you need to do. So for those of you who are listening, um, if you would like to find out where this dynamic woman of God worships, can you tell me a little bit about your church and your start time and all that good yes. stuff? I'm at North Park Church. Okay. Uh, pastor Mark Garcia is my pastor. Okay. We have two services, okay. uh, 8 o'clock and 11. Uh-huh. And then on every first and third Sunday, we have a 7 o'clock service as well. So any of those times uh-huh. that you want to come and hear us sing, please come. You have an open invitation. I love it. I absolutely love it. And for those of you who tune in with us and for those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, if you would like to come and check out where myself and my program manager, Antonia, who is not with us today. We miss you, Antonia. Hi, Antonia. (laughs) We worship um, at Perfecting Grace Church. Our pastor is Richard Miller. Our first lady is Rose Miller. And we are located at 3142 East Plaza Boulevard, National City, California, 91950. You can find us on the web at perfectinggrace.net. Again, that's Pastor Richard Miller and Lady Rose Miller. We are of Perfecting Grace, and you can find us at 3142 East Plaza Boulevard, National City, California at 91950. Or you can find us at the web at on the web at perfectinggrace.net. We're going to have a live stream coming our way pretty soon. So you'll be able to live stream and catch some of our services. And I know that you can do that with North Park Church. Yes. Um, So how can they get in touch with you on the web? Uh, www.apostolicpower.org. Excellent. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you next week here on the Simone Edwards show, or actually I should say you will hear us next week on the Simone Edwards show. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tuning in. We've had a blast with you today and we hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your Saturday and just know that no matter what is going on, that the Lord Jesus is keeping you in the midst of it all.